Hi, welcome to the channel. Huge thanks for clicking on this video. In today's video, we're going to look at a very special tent with a very special story behind it. If you're a wild camper or anyone who enjoys camping, especially if you enjoy your lightweight gear, you owe a huge debt of gratitude to the man who made this tent and the man who innovated so much many years ago to start producing these completely radical designs. Almost all the features that you rely on today came from this one person. So we'll get into that story. But first of all, let's quickly introduce the tent. Now I bought this tent, a completely impulse purchase when I was scrolling for eBay one day. Um, someone had just listed it and it was pretty local to me for 20 pounds. I'd never heard of a Saunders tent, didn't know anything about it, but they had a picture and as you can see, it's a really good looking tent. It looks like a really smart bit of kit and it certainly is. 20 pounds is all I paid for it. So I hopped in the car, drove up about uh, 15, 20 minutes, picked it up, got it home, and then started doing some research about it. So this tent is a Robert Saunders space packer. I found out since that it's actually the Mark I version, which was the more expensive version. The Mark II had a completely different um, construction in terms of materials. So this is a lightweight ripstop nylon material. The whole tent weighs 1.9 kilograms. It's a one person tent in reality. You could absolutely squeeze two in there if you, if you really must, but as a one person tent, it's absolutely ideal. Um, and obviously I've done a bit of a look around the tent already. So uh, without further ado, let's get into a bit of the story behind uh, the person who created this tent. So Robert Saunders, or better known as Bob, was born on April Fool's Day, 1930. Bob was just 23 when in 1953, Sir Edmund Hillary and the Sherpa Tengzig Norgay first conquered Everest. Over the next 10 years, Bob became really fascinated with the problems that those Himalayan expeditions faced. All the tents that they used were made of cotton, they were very heavy, the performance wasn't that good on them, so it was getting more and more expensive to keep paying lots and lots of Sherpas to keep carrying these really heavy tents up these huge mountains. So after 10 years of looking into these problems, in 1964, Bob started making his own tents. And at the time, a really revolutionary idea was using man-made synthetic materials, such as this nylon. So over the next few years, the Sanders brand completely changed tent design and manufacture. And it gave us many of the features we now take for granted. For example, fitted ground sheets, suspended inner tents, double skin tents, high strength, ripstop nylon and fly sheets, how to pitch first to protect the inner from rain whilst pitching, create the first sloping ridge tent, the first transverse ridge which developed into the bended hoop, something that's used almost universally in modern tents. And the reason why these things are so universal now is that Bob never patented or took out any intellectual copyright on any of the ideas he had. So the manufacturers were free to start using them, develop them and innovate further. This particular tent the Saunders Space Packer, the Mark I. As late as 2007, the Guardian's expert choice was still recommending this tent as being the best backpacking tent you could get, despite it being decades old by this point. Such was the reputation of these tents in the 70s and 80s that there's a load of kind of almost mythical stories that exist about these tents. One of them is that two men were hiking in the Kalahari Desert, but in the middle of nowhere, they come across this old man who's sheltered under a piece of polythene material. And they say to the man, well, really, you need a tent. And he said, yeah, and I'll get one as soon as I can afford a Saunders. So their reputation um, is really great. I mean, if you, if you start actually doing a bit of research into, into Saunders tents, you come across the many forums, people talking about them, you come to the obituaries of, of, of Bob himself, you start to realize just how valuable these tents were and how much of almost a, a design icon that they are. So. I feel really privileged to have, to have actually purchased this, this piece of sort of hiking and backpacking and wild camping history. And to be able to spend the night in it now is, 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 is genuinely, uh, you know, I feel, feel, feel really privileged to be able to do that. Sadly, the Saunders company ceased trading in November 2010, and Bob himself died two years later in 2012. Um, but he leaves this, this huge legacy of, of design, of materials, of innovations that we all use today. So, so many of the tents that you buy now and that are really cleverly designed and constructed, they owe so much, not just to this tent, but to all of the tents that Saunders designed. You know, the fact that this tent, when I got out of the bag, just felt like the recent tents I've been purchasing, just goes to show 
how ahead of the time it was that it still holds up so well now. And you know, the company ceased trading twenty, you know, twelve years ago. Yeah, that's right. Um, but I don't know when this was made. This, you know, the Mark One was in production for decades, so I've no idea how old this particular one is in terms of when it was manufactured. But it's, it still looks and feels absolutely rock solid, and you can just sense that this can really take an absolute battering. The, the fact it's so well pegged out, the really good materials, and the fact that it's so lightweight as well for the size of the tent you're getting, 1.9 kilograms, while it's not lightweight by today's standards, given the size of the tent and the sort of strength as well, I, I don't think you can you can argue with that even, even by today's standards with some of the ultralight tents that you've got, because I don't think this has the compromises that a lot of ultralight tents do. So tonight, obviously, it's just a local wild camp but I'm going to be taking this up into the mountains where it belongs and enjoying some nights out on it. I'm going to be taking it backpacking and hiking on long trips with me as well to really get some use out of it and let you know exactly what I make of it. But if you're somebody who enjoys a bit of wild camping and you've got any wild camps planned soon, especially if you like to take a little beer with you as well, it's well worth taking a minute to, to raise your glass to Bob and just to sort of remember and realize just how much of what we take for granted now came from one man's desire and passion to really change the world of lightweight camping. This has been a slightly different video, um, but if you've enjoyed it, please drop me a like. If you've ever owned a Robert Saunders tent, or you still own a Robert Saunders tent, let me know in the comments what it is, what you make of it, whether you still use it, and however it's going strong, and whether you'll have a part of it. One of the things I definitely found out was that it's really hard to find these tents for sale because the people that tend to own them tend to keep them. So uh, I think I got really lucky with this one and I've had a search for some more and I've not, not found many for sale anywhere in the UK. Um, so yeah, drop me a like, do subscribe to the channel because you will be seeing this tent again along with some other used bargains I'm, I've already picked up and some that hopefully will be picking up this week. Um, so yeah, massive thanks to everyone who's subscribed so far. Huge thanks to everyone who's watched the videos, comment, liked, all the rest of it. Please get in touch if there's anything I can do for you and I will catch you in the next one.